go up, I'll get another deal, then they'll upgrade to a deal and refer five people to me. We're literally at 2008 levels when it comes to the number of transactions. This is your 2008. Can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw! Was it the largest surge that we've ever seen? One of them for sure. And when we see a retraction of transactions, that's building up demand. So what do you think I think is happening right now? We're rookie. Nobody can afford houses. This is the worst affordability that we've ever seen. There's still plenty for you to double your business. Go look and see in the market what's happening. The difference in you being a multi, 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 multi-millionaire and making 150,000 a year. Is a legend in the real estate business. Been incredibly successful. I uh, started his career, went on to do over 100 deals a year for eight years straight as a solo producing agent. Ricky has now gone on to impact the nation, impact the country, impact the world, the lives of real estate agents. His goal is to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. You want to talk about a big goal, big opportunity? That's why Ricky's created the results in the business that he's driving right now. Super excited to welcome Ricky Carew to the stage. Guys. Okay, so I got Anna here from Frozen. <laughs> you want to tell them anything? <laughs> She's showing you her cat. <laughs> I just did the math, and this is our 13th event that we've been to this year. So we travel two, three times a month. I, I bring them everywhere we go, talk to real estate agents, investors all over the country, and uh, we have a good time doing it. So really living the dream. How many of you guys are already following me? Some capacity. Great, great. And the rest of you guys? Nice. Where you been? <laughs> it's a nice wide room. I come over here and talk to you guys. How y'all doing? Hey. hey. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so, well, number one, we're staying at the Galleria. We walked around for an hour and a half yesterday and didn't even scratch the surface of that place. <laughs> so what's the first thought you guys have when you hear the word Alabama? Roll football. <laughs> Besides football. <laughs> Ticks. What's that? Ticks. Ticks. Okay, now, we're, now we're getting somewhere. Ticks. <laughs> Beaches. Can you beat that? Beaches. Beaches. Sweet home Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. Okay. I was in New York and I asked that, and they said, mud. Next slide. This is actually where I live in Alabama. Did you guys know we had beautiful beaches like this? Oh. Yeah, of course not, but you're gonna go there next time because it's literally an hour and a half shorter to go there than Destin. How many people go to Destin from here? Just, just an hour and a half shorter, just take a right on 59 and you're right there. It's, it's really nice, it's spread out. Destin's a really compact island and Gulf Shores Orange Beach is a lot more spread out and there's incredible restaurants. So I grew up right here and I sell mostly Gulf Front condos right on the beach. It's what I primarily uh, specialize in, but I've sold everything. Apartment complexes, commercial lots, houses, everything, but I, I focus on the beach. Um, but anyway, you guys should come there, number one. Number two, if you want to buy a condo there, I know a good agent. <laughs> and if you guys have referrals over there, send them my way, all right? Next slide. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so I grew up right there on the beach. This is a screenshot out of my local MLS. This is eight years. This is 2014 January to December 2021. So I was the number one agent in my entire MLS um, out of all brokerages. And also this puts, this lumps teams together. So I was just a single agent with one assistant crushing entire teams. 
and I did this for eight years in a row. I got into business in 2002, okay? How many real estate agents do we have? Okay, good, about half the room. And, and out of the investors, how many invest in a single family? Okay, nobody. Uh, Multi-family, commercial. Cool. So, long story short, because I want to get into actual the market with you guys and what you guys should be doing day to day. But I, I started in 02, okay? I was 20 years old, made a lot of money, <coughs> lost a lot of money, and got out of the business. Went back to roofing houses, worked on an oil rig, went bankrupt, was sleeping in my car, sleeping on people's couches. I got back in the business in 2008. <laughs> the most amazing time to get back in business. Why? Why? Why do you think it was the best time to get back in the business? Everybody was leaving. What's that? Everybody was leaving. Well, a another small like key point is is that business is unlimited for every single person. Competition doesn't exist. Doesn't matter in, out, how many eight. None of that matters. The reason why it was the best time to get into business is because property was 50% cheaper. And it was so easy to sell properties. It was the easiest time in the world to sell properties. And there weren't any, there was no agents there, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. My thought was, let me go crush foreclosures on the buying side, and these buyers will become sellers in three years when prices go up. I'll get another deal, then they'll upgrade to a deal and refer five people to me and my business will explode in three to five years. 2008 to 2014, literally, I sold 100 properties in 2014, and it was because of my visualization of what I could do in 2008 and how that would spider web into a snowball over the next couple of years. The same thing is happening right now. I don't wanna go through all this stuff. Next slide. This is a nice little visualization. It's not 100% accurate. Visualization of my business. And you can see I'm just treading water when the business is, when, 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 when prices were coming down, I'm just kind of treading water there with my market share. This is market share. And I didn't do anything different from 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I didn't do anything different day to day. The reason why my business <clears throat> exploded is that it expanded with the resurgence of the market. Right now, we're, we're, we're looking at 4.8 million, 4.28 million transactions this year. 2008 was 4.12, something like that, million transactions. We're literally at 2008 levels when it comes to number of transactions. This is your 2008. And I wanna go through where the exact opportunity is for your business to look exactly like this. You with me? Yeah. Can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw! All right, next slide. April 28, 2020, what were we all doing? COVID. What were you doing? Yeah. Working on investment houses. Showing houses. That's the only thing you get into? You're at home. <laughs> they made every single person stay at home for 45 days. What did I do? I put out a video. Before the market, before the economy reopened, I said real estate's going to surge as the economy reopens. What happened when the economy re reopened? Was it the largest surge that we've ever seen? Yes. One of them for sure. Why did I think this? How did I see this? I'll tell you why. Number one, I've been doing this long enough to know that when we see a retraction of transactions, that's building up demand. So what do you think I think is happening right now? Building up. More than we've ever seen, ever. The pent up demand is historical right this second. I'll show you why. However, April 28, 2021, I posted this video and we're all sitting in our houses not knowing if our friends and family are gonna die, if we're gonna die, if we're still gonna have jobs, if the world's even gonna still exist. Were you guys thinking, oh, real estate's about to blow up and explode? I was. Next slide. I'm gonna sound more and more like Sean Connery every, every time. So what do I think's happening now? This is Redfin's medium prices in the entire country. We started the year at 349,000, 349,000. We bottomed out in January. In December, I said, I think we're at a pricing bottom. There's video. It wasn't quite the bottom, but it was close. Look how similar 2022 and 2023 look. 
<laughs> and pretty much on the same trajectory. We're down 1% year over year, and guess what? That 1% down year over year happens to be during the same, close to the same time that we hit all time highs last year. So what does that mean? That we're 1% away from all time highs, prices. Mm. Meanwhile, mainstream media and dipshits on YouTube <laughs> <laughs> talk about how hard it's gonna crash. And they say we're down year over year. But wait a minute, Mr. YouTube genius, we're up over the last four or five months. And not only up, it has skyrocketed. Supply and demand, it's simple economics, of course. But look at where we are right now, 381. The high last year was 387 on this chart. All this data comes from MLS, national MLS. Same place Zillow pulls their data from. This is where Repping gets their data. We're literally $6,000 away, less than 2% away from hitting all-time highs, which is going to happen. Next slide. This is Houston. You can see it's the same, same shape. Started at 329, we're at 343. Where's it headed? Straight past 2022. Not hard to realize. I'll just do this. Sounds like a clicker. But rookie, nobody can afford houses. This is the worst affordability that we've ever seen. Really? Let's dissect for a second. This is mortgage rates. You can see back in 89, it was six, 700 bucks a month, right? You see where we are now? Oh my God. But wait a second. Let's adjust this chart Here you go. for inflation. Boom. Now think about this for a second. In 1989, we're at six, 700, but you adjust that for inflation, we're at 16 to 1700 in today's money. What does this chart show me? It shows me, yeah, we're a little high, but you see where it's headed? It peaked out and it's coming down. But what this chart really illustrates to me is the fact of how spoiled we've been over the last decade. You see what's happened over the last decade, right? We're, all we're doing is getting back to the 90s and early 2000s. That's it. Nothing crazy. But everybody's going to cry because they're used to this. Oh, my God, my family can't afford a house anymore. No, it's just getting back to normal of what it was back in the 90s and early 2000s. I'm sorry that it's harder, but you're going through the same... The, the, the same barrier of entry as we did back in the 90s and 2000s, which is where it needs to be. It was artificial because of historic, historically, I'll show you in a second. We went down in 2008 50% for the first time ever. And historical rates at the same time, that created this affordability that was just amazing and we didn't even know it. We thought this was the new norm. That's not, that's not the new norm. That was a temporary moment that we should have all taken advantage of more than we did. But now we're just getting back to normal. Are we on the same page? Mm -hmm. yeah. Next slide. Mortgage payment as a percentage of median household income. It looks the same to me. And when you really look at it, we're under 1989. And you see the same thing. We were just spoiled, ladies and gentlemen. You know why people are crying about affordability? Because they used to spend, say, 20%, 19% of their, of their income on their mortgage. And now they're having to spend normal amount, which is 25, 26, 27% on the mortgage. You know why they're crying about that? Because they got accustomed to the 19% and they were going out and blowing the, other, the rest of their paycheck on stuff they don't even need. And they grew accustomed to that lifestyle. Now they're complaining about it. I can't keep up the same lifestyle I had. It's time to make adjustments if you want to if you want to build in this in this world. You can't control what happens. You got to take what happens and do something with it. We're down sixty thousand agents, but you see this wave that happens every year. What what causes that? It's because agents that aren't doing anything finally decide to not pay their dues. Then they're not even agent for a while, but they don't, they don't, 
they're, they don't take their name off the roster because the dudes haven't become actually late enough for them to take them off the roster. That's why you see this steep decline and increase, right, every year. Because that's just the dues coming due. But why are we down 60,000 agents if, in fact, we're about to hit an all-time high price-wise? The market's so good, Ricky. Why are we about, why are agents leaving the business more than, more than they have been? Next slide. Because we're down to 2008 levels of transactions. And if they got in during COVID and they haven't made it yet, they're probably thinking, oh, the market's really bad. If I hadn't made it up to this point, then I'm really not going to make it. I might as well just hang it up. So we're losing agents because we have less transactions happening. But if they only knew, then it doesn't matter. Right? Think about it like this. The entire industry, even in your local market, right? Is everybody from Houston? No? Let's pretend like everybody's from Houston. Just the amount of business in Houston, your business as an agent, as an investor, whatever you do, is a microscopic dot. You can't even see it with a magnifying glass, a microscope, compared to the overall market. The market could go down 90% and 10% of what's left. Your business is still a little bitty microscopic dot. There's still plenty for you to double your business, even if, even if it retracted 90%. That's just facts. Worried about all this stuff is not going to do anything to help you build your business. So this goes back to 2008. 1. 4.12. Same, a close to the same amount of transactions we're going to have this year. It's interesting, right? But look how long it took to get from 4.12 to 5. 5 million. It's 2013. That was a long haul. Long haul. This time is going to be a violent, a violent V-shaped uh, recovery of the housing market to five million transactions. It's not going to take five years to get to five million. It's going to happen next year or the year. It's going to be unlike anything you've ever seen. You think the 2022 surge was something? Wait till you see what happens this time when you take all the demand and hold it back with for mortgage rates with mortgage rates and, and lack of inventory and see what happens when that rubber band the further you pull it back the harder it's going to go yeah and it's being pulled back harder than we've ever seen in history so this is inventory look in the 80s at any moment during the 80s we had two to three million homes for sale two to three million homes for sale in the 80s Four million in 2008. Coach Michael Burke, the man, the myth, the legend. Give it up for him. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Michael Jordan poster is what I think of when I see him. A million listings right now. We're really at about 700,000 active listings that aren't pending right now. In a country that has a third of the more population and a third of more third more households than we had back in the 80s. Seven hundred forty eight. Now we're down six point two eight percent inventory in the country compared to last year. This is a record for May. This is a record for May. Did we go lower? Early in the year in 2022, yep. But for May, lowest that we've ever been. How are we going to solve that problem? I'll tell you. And Zillow just came out. So I've been saying for about 60 days, 60 to 90 days, that we're going to hit positive year over year prices. Okay? Why did I think that? Well, if you go back to the, the slide showing prices, you'll see that in June, as prices went down, it created this wall. That's gonna, that with the, you could see like several months ago that the trajectory of prices could easily bust through that wall in June, easily. So I, I knew the prices were gonna go positive year over year. What I didn't think about was the possibility that they could go to an all-time new high. That became way more interesting to me over the last week as I realized that. 
But Zillow is the first of the real estate data companies that has come out and said that we're positive year over year. Their latest report, they said we're up 1.4% uh, from April to May. Okay, sales rose nearly 10% April to May. Inventory reached a record low for May. They could put a period right there because that's historical, but the second part of the sentence is just as interesting. As high mortgages deter sellers. Now, did you ever think we're going to be in a market where mortgage rates deter sellers instead of buyers? You think it's going to deter buyers. What's happening is extremely interesting with that conversation. Why? I'll tell you in just a sec. Typical home value is, is at uh, $346,000, up basically 1% over last May. We're up year over year right this second. Okay. You know how sellers, existing home sellers, won't list because rates are so high and they're sitting on such low interest rates? Okay. Here's the opportunity. What do you think is going to happen in a couple of years with the buyers who are buying at 6 to 7% when rates are 5% in two to three years? They're going to be happy to sell and upgrade. The market's going to going to flip. Now, there's going to be way less because people are going to hang on to those rates longer. But as rates start to come down, we're going to see people who are in the six and sevens that are buying now sell to upgrade. There's two more trades. You, you, you represent a buyer right now, that's going to be like 20 deals to you over the next 10 years. Why? Because they're going to sell it in three years and upgrade. That's two more deals. They're going to refer five people to you who also re re resell and buy something else. It's the relationships is what you need to be thinking about and representing. Go out and stack your listings. That needs to be the name of the game. But don't sleep on the buyers right now. Because that, that's what I did in 2008. I represented buyers and foreclosures, knowing they were going to resell and then buy another, refer people to me. My business would blow up. Same thing's happening right now. Go out and represent buyers on new constructions. They're going to sell it in three, four years, buy their dream home at a lower rate. Bingo. Slide. Zillow said that adding uh, adding that it's a little cooler than the previous two springs, okay, but still hotter than 2018 and 19. You guys understand we're in a better market right now than we were in 2018 and 19. Is it slower than the last two years? Yeah, we got spoiled with the last two years the same way the general public got spoiled with low interest rates and great affordability over the last 10 years. We can't sit around and cry about that. We're still in a better market than we were in 18 to 19. Shut up. <laughs> this is one of the greatest opportunities that you have all ever seen. If you'll look at it for what it is and realize where you could be over the next couple of years, if you take advantage of it. But if you're just blinded, if you're, if you're ignoring this and you're just continuing on and you're just whatever you do, then you're just gonna keep doing whatever you do. If you want to go to a super high level, you've got to be able to visualize where the market is, where the opportunity is, and how you can take advantage of it to exponentially expand. Right, Ben? Expand? Yeah. Okay, expand. <laughs> another, another interesting point. Home values rose faster in those West Coast tech subs that got hit really hard. Prices rose faster than the national average for the second straight month. Hey, San Jose, San Francisco, they got crushed. Now their prices are coming back faster than the national average. It just goes to show you guys, you can't listen to all this. You gotta get out there and do your thing. Next slide. Okay, Zonda came out and did a study. 98% of millennials want to become homeowners because they want to build their equity instead of someone else's. There's 72 million millennials. Let's say this, this survey is off. So let's say they survey 1,200, whatever. Let's say it's 80%, 70%, 95%, whatever. It's a lot of them. If they rent, their rent's going to keep going up. If they buy, their payment's not going to change for 30 years, and they're going to build equity. It's an easy financial business decision. So when I read this, 
I thought, okay, let me dig in and see what's really happening here. So the average first time home buyer is 36 last year, 33 the year before. So I started thinking, okay, millennials are 33 and 36. 98% of them, according to the survey, want to become homeowners. They have the desire to become homeowners. So I said, let me go back and look at birth rates and see if there's something happening here. What did I see in 1990, 33 years ago? Massive spike. See it? Mm -hmm. You see the spike? Yeah. It's not a joke spike. It's not like a bleep. It's a massive spike. We have more 33-year-olds, people turning 33, than we've seen in decades since, since the baby boomers. And you see that we're there. We actually have a couple years higher than now, later, but we're there for a good decade and a half. Now, these, these people are turning 33 this year. They're going to be 34 next year, 35. Then we've got the next batch of 33s coming in. At the end of the 16, 17 years, that's just 33. Then the year after that, they're turning 34, 35, 36, which remembers 36 this year, 33 last year. This in itself creates so much pent up demand that we don't even know it. We've never seen anything like this for a long time. And we're sitting here in the position that we're sitting. Crisis through recessions. The shaded areas are recessions. The white line is prices. Dude, I get in so many back and forths with the keyboard warriors about, <laughs> <laughs> you know, recessions and home prices and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm just thinking, have you even looked to see what home price, how home prices actually do during recessionary periods? By the way, are we going to have a recession? Oh yeah, it's going to be the worst we've ever seen and stuff. It's crazy the stuff they say. Back in the late 70s when we saw 18, 19 percent interest rates, what happened? Prices went up. The only time we saw a, a decrease was in the 2008 situation. Is it? Okay, you ready for this? This is a this is home, this is residential home appreciation every year since 2000 since 1942. They say what goes up must come down, right? That's what they're saying right now. Oh, it's went up so much. It's went up so much. Well, what they're doing is they're two things. They're comparing it to stocks, which can go up and down, and lose 50 percent, all this stuff. And they're also thinking about 2008, which is not that, it's, it's kind of still fresh on people's mind. So they're just mixing all that and getting super confused. Back in the early 40s, we had five double digit appreciation years. And they were like, it's gonna crash and burn. Prices are gonna just crash and burn. What happened? It never went negative. 2%, zero, four, six, four, 12, <laughs> one. If you go to the late 70s where we had six years Four of those were double digit appreciation years, the huge run up before we had the 18% interest rates, 19% interest rates. There was a huge inflation problem back then, just like we had now. They compared the inflation last year to the late 70s. Same situation. We had six years, double digit, four of them were double digit appreciation years. That's going to crash. No. Seven, five, one, five, five, seven, ten, eight. Never went down. Collectively, two years, we had a negative 1% in 90 and 91, okay? Then you had the run-up in the early 2000s, the four double-digit appreciation years, and then the crash. Here, most recently, we had two years of double-digit appreciation. Two. And one of them was barely double-digit. It was 10. And they, they're saying it's going to crash. We're at 6 now. And right now, you remember the chart I showed you? Fixing hit all time highs. We're up like 9% right now. We're almost to 10% double digit appreciation this year. I've said since December, February, we're gonna hit double digit appreciation this year. Why do I think that? It's not hard to see where it's going. Okay. 
Now, what all does this have to do with your business? Anybody? Go ahead, I'm waiting. What's up? You just keep going. You just keep going. Hmm? The market is growing. That's Alabama talk. The way you're going. Supply and demand of your market. Supply and demand of your market. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, what does all that stuff have to do with your business? Supply and demand of your market. <laughs> hell, what does that have to do with anything I'm talking about? <laughs> Anybody got a logical answer? <laughs> <laughs> Just because the media and all these different things are saying this is going to happen or this is going to happen, you shouldn't get caught up in all that. But you still pursue what you need to do. That's good. That's real good. That's actually close. Did I see a hand raised over here? Now the time to gain the market share. If you take market share right now, That's good. That's good. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. So why did I go through all this stuff? So that I could give you confidence in the market and tell you that it doesn't matter. Go out there and do your thing. Yeah. Go out there and crush it. Nothing's stopping you from crushing it at all. What's your biggest excuse for why you're not crushing it? Just give me one. You. I want you. <laughs> we know this. The market's going to surge back 110% of the time, every single time, with a vengeance. Go ahead. And we know this, closings are going to happen every single day by the truckloads, regardless of market conditions. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. Go, go in your MLS right this second and see how many closings are happening. While you're complaining about no, no closings or whatever it is you're complaining about, look at the data. Don't just say it because of what you feel because you're not doing what you're supposed to do to create business. Go look and see in the market what's happening. If you go back to 2008, 8, 9, 10, 11, all those down years. If you go back to that, that time and you look at the data and you see how many closings and the prices and the inventory, you look at all that stuff. You look back, know what you, you, you kind of have a biased opinion because you know what you know. You know how it all played out. But try to take that out. When you look at that data, you're going to say to yourself, you know what? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad back then. It wasn't that bad at all. And when you compare that to now, you're going to say, wow, this is really amazing right now. And when you look at this year, compare when you, you know, five years, you look back at this year, you're really going to say this year was amazing. And this is going to be a lot of people's turning point because this is going to be when you actually build your market share. And create that snowball that turns into whatever it is you're trying to do. This is the year right here. This is your 2008. Next slide. Okay, what's market share? Don't look at the screen. <laughs> Tell me what you think it is. Most people think it's how many listings I have compared to the rest of the market. How many deals I'm doing. Oh, da, 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 da. All the other agents. Not me. I'm thinking about what agent or investor or whatever it is that you do has the largest percent of people in the market who know who you are and never forget you. That's market share. If you take a guy that's doing 20 deals a year, but he's crushing his database and he's meeting people and these people love him and he has a system in place where nobody ever forgets who he is, I'm taking that guy over the guy that's doing 100 deals who's not building the database. You have to look into the businesses and see what, how they're really building the business and stuff. But just generally speaking, I'm going to take this, this guy over here that's building his database and creating new relationships in the market, has systems in place where people never forget who he is after that great first impression. Can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeehaw. Let's get louder on good time. That's how I thought Texas was. I thought y'all did it bigger in Texas and shit. Okay. We'll go back to Alabama. Just kidding. Yeah, nicer beaches. I love Texas. Okay. Does, does this make sense for a second? Mm -hmm. I'll stay here for just a second. Okay, next. So we got three buckets of your business. Lead in, follow up, nurture. Okay, let's, let's dissect this a little bit. I'll get through all of this. And I'm on, I got one half time for two questions at the end. Yes. Lee Jim. Here we go. Bam. I'm not going to tell you to not do social media, to not cold call, to not door knock, to not do open houses, to not do networking events, to not do direct mail, to not do all the stuff that you do. I'm not going to tell you not to do any of it because guess what? It all works. I don't have a coaching program I'm trying to sell you, to try to tell you how to do this or that. I'm here to tell you that you gotta figure out what works best for you and go all in on those few things and be okay with the business you're losing from the things that you're ignoring. Like me, for example, I did it just cold calling property owners and doing direct mail and a weekly email, and I ignored social media, and I ignored door knocking, I ignored Zillow leads, and I ignored all this stuff, because this was working for me. And I went all in with that. You gotta figure out what your all in play is with Lee Jen. I'll tell you, I, I, I'm gonna go through what works best for me, right, and, and tell you why. Next. Okay, so let's think about it for a second. If existing property owners won't sell because interest rates are high and they're sitting on low interest rate, then me as an agent, if I'm trying to get listings, or even if I'm an investor trying to wholesale or find property owners that would sell, what's gonna be my best bet for that? Probably gonna be people who don't actually live in the house that, that, that I'm calling about, or that I'm trying to target. Absentee owners, second homeowners, investment owners, long-term property owners, Airbnbs. They can sell that property, they don't have to move. They can keep their low interest rate on the house they live in, but they can sell this property for an all-time high. <clears throat> take money off the property, bless you. Take property, take money off the table and go buy something else or do whatever they're trying to do. People sell for a lot of different reasons. Absentee owners. For sell by owners. They've said, hey, I'll sell. I don't have an agent. I don't have anybody representing me. I'll sell. Expires, new and old. We like, we like one to two year old expires, but new and old. They said, hey, we'll sell, didn't sell for whatever reason, boom. Now understand something. When I'm calling a property owner, I'm, I'm not calling, I'm using the property. I'm not trying to sell the property. I'm not calling about the property. I'm calling to use the property as an excuse to talk to the property owner, see if I can connect and get to know them and see what it is I can do to help them. What are they trying to do? What kind of game plan can I help them put together based on my professional experience in the game? to help them do whatever it is they're trying to do. What y'all got going on over here? <laughs> oh, taking notes, taking notes. Texting every word I say. Okay, like I just dropped one on you right there. I'm using the property. So like, for example, the most of the expireds that I sold, I represented them as a buyer. Because I'm calling not to sell the property. Most most mainstream coaches and brokers will try to tell that they're so focused on that listing. It's all about that listing, getting the appointment, getting the listing signed, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. <laughs> what if they want to buy something? You're turning them off with all this objection handling, robotic talk. I'm trying to talk to them like they're my mom or dad. Hey, I see you were trying to sell this property. What happened with that? Oh, okay. Well, in that case, let's do this. Let's do that. I'm looking to buy something. What can I do to help you here, man? 
I make live calls on YouTube all the time. I've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of videos. I think this is the greatest opportunity to write here at Stack Listings. I've got an agent with 26 active for sale by no listings. Another agent with 40 active old expires, one to one and a half year old expires. She actually just sold a $3 million plot of lands in the state of Georgia, it was an expire. It was a year and a half old expire. Next slide. They're, they're turning them into listings? Yeah. So if, if, if the sale by owner is turning into a listing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah an, act, an active listing on MLS. So if you want all these leads, you can get them from pennies at redxdiscount.com. Get GLEs Plus. You get 75 property owners of your choice in your market. Phone numbers, emails. Expires Plus. Go back 10 years worth of expired, extra, uh, withdrawn, canceled data. Multi-line dialer, call them. Use Ad Builder to hit them all on social media. Literally for like $500 a month, you can have tens of thousands of leads. Call, text, email, and hit them on social media. And you guys are spending like a thousand bucks on one lead. I'm saying take half the money and get a lifetime of leads. Until somebody tells me something better than this, I'm not gonna say tell you guys to do anything else. Can anybody tell me something that is better than this? You call the exact property owner you want to do business with, develop a relationship, don't even try to sell the property. See exactly what it is they're trying to do and why. They have an agent they normally work with. What can I do to help you today, good sir? Or ma'am. Women on property too, right? <laughs> Next. My scripts, free. RCScripts.com. Yes. In 2017, I quit prospecting altogether. That was the first year I made a million dollars as a real estate agent. Quit prospecting altogether. Up until that point, I just prospected my ass off. Built my database up to the point. 2007, late 2007, when I got back in the business, started tinkering back, I uh, started doing a weekly email. So I've been doing it every single Wednesday since 2007. And by 2017, it got me out of prospecting. I was still in production because I was still servicing the deals, going to listing appointments, showing property, closing deals. I'm still an agent, but I wasn't having to prospect anymore or go find leads or buy or buy leads or do anything else. Not even not even social media. I I still don't do social media to this day. Because think about this. And I preach social media. Social media is the reason why I'm not in production now. Thank you, Jesus, for social media. But for a real estate agent, What's the purpose of, what, what's the end goal of doing social media as a real estate agent? Get clients. Get out of region. Brand. Selfies. Selfies and stuff. <laughs> the entire goal of any region activity comes right back to one thing. Huh? To have a real live one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. So if, they, if it's a YouTube video, then they see they're, they're calling you or they're filling out a form, you're calling them, you're talking to them on the phone. Every single Legion activity is set up to do, the system is this for every single one, same mechanism. Create a list of people, call the list of people. A bunch of Facebook ads and Instagram ads or organic reach, whatever, you're hoping they fill out the form. List of people to call the people. Do an open house, a bunch of people come in, fill the form, make a list of people. The next day, call follow up. All right? Can you guys think of something that you can do lead gen wise that doesn't come right back to the goal being to have a one on one conversation with someone, to have a consultation to see what it is they want to do and why, and how you can help them do it? No. So for me, I felt like I hacked the system. Because instead of, I, I figured it out real early, instead of going out and making a bunch of videos and doing a bunch of marketing and stuff, that I know results right back to just talking to people on the phone, I was like, I'll just talk to people on the phone. I can get their number for less than a penny. And just talk to the exact person I wanna do business with and go ahead and create that relationship. Why? Because I'm talking to them like they're my mom or dad. I'm not calling like every other jackass real estate agent out there. 
right? 30 of you guys have called me in the last three days. Yeah, but you haven't talked to me yet, sir. I'm calling to actually just see what I, I'm not trying to sell you anything, get you to sell or buy. I'm just trying to see what you want to do, why, and if I can help you. I don't even care if I make money. And then guess what happens? Leave a shit ton of money. <laughs> mm. But anyway, the weekly email literally got me to where I didn't have to prospect anymore. Start my weekly email.com. You can go back and see every email I did from since November. And, and use my template. Just use it. Next slide. Here's a couple screenshots. I got 19,000 people getting this, 72, 74, 7,300 people open it every single week. And this is all I do for my real estate business, and I close 100 deals a year. Now, this is the dream that I want to sell you right here. That if you work your ass off over the next three to five years, to take advantage of this market, build that database up, let it all snowball. You can get to a place where you don't have to prospect anymore and all the deals just come and just fall in your lap. When people call me off this, they're not interviewing three agents. They've already done business with me or they've been referred to me by somebody that's done business with me and they're only calling one person. In the beginning of your career, you gotta, you gotta like fight for it because you got two other agents trying to get it as well. You got, you got two other agents trying to get that get that listing as well, and you'll lose some in the, in the beginning. Not over here. Very, very rarely are you gonna lose a listing when you're on this side of the business. So if you'll just put that lump sum of sweat equity into your business up front as fast as you can, instead of trying to prolong it by doing all these shiny penny activities, then you can get to a place where you got the business of your dreams where you can stop prospecting and do what I did. Go build other businesses. If you want to, or you can just go spend some more time with your family. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? This is going to be like a, it just. This is what we're going to do every day. It's real simple. And you're going to say, oh, well, it can't be that simple. No, it is that simple. If you make things really simple, then your life ends up being super simple. My life is super simple. I was talking to the investment guy. I don't, know if, I don't think he's in here right now, but he was talking about, you know, because I buy a lot of uh, single family and multifamily, and I like to buy things already built. And he's like, you ever thought about building? <coughs> I'm like, yeah, I built a couple houses, but I'm not going to get into that space because now I've got to go out there and deal with paint colors and contractors not doing their job and deadlines and all this stuff. That's creating a new job for myself when I could just buy it already built and just start making money day one, I'm gonna pick the easiest route, the path of the least resistance, okay? And that's how I built my real estate business. You know, I don't follow up with anybody, I don't call them on their anniversaries, I don't check in with them on their dog's birthday or any of the stuff that a lot of you guys are worried about. I don't have a CRM where I keep up with like what people said, um, you know, when their kids are going to college, none of that stuff. Does anybody, is anybody worried about that kind of stuff? Can you give me an example that actually would matter that I need to remember? No? Then why are you worried about it? Right. By who? Somebody that doesn't sell. No? Did he ever sell? Oh, he does sell? It's fine. I'm picking on you for that situation, but most of the time advice comes from people who never sold or doesn't sell or isn't really. My thing is, is I care about people. But if somebody's mother died within the past five months, I want to remember that. I don't need a piece of paper to, to make me remember that when this person calls me, I need to be sensitive about that subject. But in five years, they don't want to talk about their mother dying five years ago. I don't need to remember that. And all the time we spend on trying to remember all this stuff, you think about that. If you spend thir just 30 minutes a week, that's 26 hours in a year. What could you do with 26 hours? And you think, oh, it's just 30 minutes a week that I'm updating my CRM with all this bullshit. What can you do with 26 hours? Now think about if you're spending more than 30 minutes a week. Time compounds like crazy. You can really, that, that 26 hours could be the difference in you being a multi, 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 multi-millionaire and making 150,000 a year. Yes, ma'am. So is your weekly email replacing the sessions that we have with clients? Yup, yup. 
and I send it out to my entire database. So guess what? Scalable, simple. I create it, I sit down and actually build it. I come up with the content. That takes time, but damn, is it worth it? Because they know it's not automatically generated. It's not talking about how to cook shrimp etouffee or what color to paint your walls in the, in the fall. I can Google that shit. I need my agent to tell me real-time market stats in my local market and what he thinks about it. Or here's a nice new restaurant. I bet you didn't know about this. I went there with my wife and we had the whatever. It's amazing. Email back for a $50 chance to win a $50 gift card or something. Real value. Listen, your daily goal needs to be to make five new friends a day with property owners. Period. NAR did a study. What do you think the number one reason that people choose a real estate agent? At the end of a deal, you ask the seller, you ask the buyer, you say, how did you pick your agent? What do you think the number one agent was? That they had a friend in the business with a great reputation. And that was like 30 something percent. Everything else was one or below what brokers they're at, online, blah, blah, blah. They had a friend in the business with a great reputation. You create friends in the market, next, hit the next one. You do that, 250 working days a year, you got 6,000 friends and property owners over the course of five years getting a weekly email on the same day of the week forever to show consistency, dependability, professionalism, knowledge of, that you're in the market doing your thing. How big do you think your business is? You're probably the number one agent in your market or, or even investor. This could go for any industry. You build those relationships, you give that great first impression, and then you never let them forget that great first impression by them seeing your name in their, in, in their inbox every single Wednesday. You're locked in. There's a good chance that you're going to win. Next. Why do you choose Wednesday? Is that a curiosity? No reason. Okay. I didn't know if there was a I figure, I figure like... <laughs> You know, after the weekend, they're trying to get caught up. Yeah. At, at the end of the week, they're like excited about the weekend. Midweek's like, let me get some information. Already covered this. Next. Just watch the MLS hot sheet every day for a good 15, 10, 15 minutes. New listings, pendings, closings, expires, withdrawals. You'll be a market expert. Just, It's just second nature. It's just going to be subconsciously. You're going to become a market expert like that. You're gonna be spitting out numbers and price per square foot and that properties came on the market in this subdivision and that subdivision. You're gonna just start spitting out stuff you didn't even know you knew. When a client starts asking you, talking on the phone, you're showing property, whatever. You're gonna know the stuff like the back of your hand. You're gonna see properties come on. You're gonna see them go pending in a couple weeks, what the agents were. And you're gonna see properties that spur memories of other clients. You're gonna see something come on and be like, oh, I need to call this client because I sold him a house in there a couple years ago. Check on him, see how he's doing, see if he saw this property come on. And then you're deepening relationships. This does a lot. <laughs> Daily routine. Make calls from nine to 12. I don't care who you're calling. Call Zilla leads. Call for sale bound leads. Call Facebook leads. I don't, you better be calling somebody. Somebody in your organization, if you have a team, or if you're a single agent, it's you. Somebody has to be having a conversation to, to build a business. Yes. You make calls from 9 to 12, do social media all afternoon, do all your marketing stuff, handwritten letters, weekly emails, make your videos, direct mail, SEO, blogs, whatever you do. Now, is this simple? It's real simple. You do this, you're going to be a multimillionaire. It's just a matter of time. Next. Okay, this is a good one. Go ahead. One deal a week. All you need, this is tried and true. This isn't like a theory. I've got multiple, multiple, multiple agents that do this. If you want to close one deal a week, by the way, you an agent? How many active buyers and sellers you work with right now? Uh, like five. Five. How many five. Are you? five. You an agent? 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 How many? How many are you working with? No. Huh? Fifteen. Fifteen. How many deals are you closing? Four a month. What did you say? 
15, one a week. Case in point, the most common answer is four. Statistically, that's 0.8 deals. If you got four active buyers and sellers, you ain't working on nothing. Zero. Statistically, maybe two or three buy, whatever, and you get lucky, but statistically speaking, you average that out over time. If you're working with four, you're working on basically nothing. You'll squeeze one out here and there. You need 15 to 20 to get to one deal a week. Next. You want two deals a week? That's what I did for eight years in a row. Two a week, two a week, two a week, every week. 25 active buyers and sellers. Super simple. And once you build that database up, when I got it up to 10,000, that was 2017, I was closing 100 deals a year. I was able to quit prospecting and continue selling 100 properties a year just from the weekly email. Again, this is a snowball that was built. Just to visualize it, I didn't do anything different. Calls, marketing, weekly email. Calls, marketing, weekly email. And my business researched with the market. You live your profit. That's it. Um, I'll give you a copy of these slides. Text me here, and also we can stay in touch there and all that good stuff. Stay on top of my live trainings, my live calls, everything that I'm doing. You do your videos at home? Mm -hmm. Do your own editing? Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't edit my Instagram. Yeah. So I added about half of my YouTube stuff. So. Pretty intense. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Text me here if you want to copy these slides and stay in touch with me. Here we go. All right, number one, I know you guys all, I mean, just to show up to one of these things and stay all day means you're pretty dedicated. And I know you're looking for something. So whether you got it from me or another speaker up here or whatever, I hope you found whatever it was that you're looking for in your business that you can really take and implement. But you know how I said the most common answer is four, right? I saw that number. Also, last year, I don't know if you guys saw that slide where, where NAR came out and said 8%, 8% of agents sold four or more properties up to halfway through the year last year. Did you guys remember seeing that slide? Four, four or more properties, and I said, there's four again. And then every time I do a speech or a Zoom call or a training, there could be thousands of people or four people or 100 people and I say, hey, here's what we need to do. Here's the challenge for the next week. Go do it. We meet that. Guess how many people did it? Four. And so my question is, is who's the four people going to be? Right? Who, who, who's the four in this room that's going to take something I said or another speaker as you're trying to mold all this information into your own business to go do something really special over the next decade? Okay, if, you're be, if you're one of the four people, make some noise. That was weak, but there can only be four of you guys. So just four this time, okay? One, two, three. There can only be four. All right, thank you guys for listening, and I'm going to take two questions. Yes, ma'am. Are you an agent, or investor? What do you do? I'm about to get a license. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what do you mean by like make my plan with seller? What's up? What do you mean by make make my plan with the seller? Make a friend? Yeah. Same way we're friends right now. Okay. Like we're we're friends now, right? Yeah. I think do that with five sellers a day. Okay. You can go on RedXDiscount.com, like I showed. Yeah. And just get geo leads, you pick out the property owners, you get expires, you can even do for sale by owners, call them, make friends with them. Go to rcscripts.com and download my scripts, and then go to YouTube and watch me call Prospects Live. Yeah. And just understand the flow. Let, let's role play real quick, okay? Yeah. You're the property owner. Okay. Okay, ring, ring, ring. Hi. What's your name again? Yeah, I'm sorry. Miracle. Mir miracle? Yeah. Okay. Hey, is this Miracle? Yes. Hey, Miracle, Ricky Caruthan with EXP Realty right here in Houston. How you doing today? Cool, me too, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. 
Great. Listen, I don't want to take it too much of your time, but a house right around the corner from you just sold. Yeah. And I was going to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is awesome. It, it was a really nice house. It sold really fast. And I didn't know if you thought about buying or selling anything lately. So I'm just calling to see if there's something I could do for you. Again, I'm in real estate. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Click. I'm going to hang up on you. Yeah. Is there something I could do for you? And you'll say, eh, nah, probably not. Right? Yeah, cool. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to buy or sell? Uh, yes, Ben. Oh, okay, cool. Ben? Ben who? I might know him. I, I, I'm an agent. He's an agent. Ben? Ben Deal, you mean? Yeah, Ben Deal. Oh, I heard he's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you're in great hands with Ben, of course. He's an amazing agent. I'd still love the opportunity to stay in touch with you. Would that be okay? Sure. Great. What's a good email for you? Cool, and is this your cell number? Great, great talking to you. Um, I'm gonna stay in touch via email. If there's anything you ever need in the world, feel free to reach out. Again, I'm Ricky Crew, the XP right here in Houston. Tell everybody to say hello, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Anybody else wanna do something like that? Okay. <laughs> you guys have been quiet over here. Just kidding. Y'all are way louder. Um, I'm gonna think, I got time for one more question, if anybody has one. Hey, you got, you got, you got a mic? Are you using AI on your emails? Or? I am AI. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not using AI. Let me get one more question since that was a short one. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not using AI, I'm just doing my emails. I'm okay with like spending five minutes to make something really amazing and like really on top, like cutting edge and stuff. One more before I dip and let Mickey G come up. So I'm gonna have to help somebody ask a question, right? So you're gonna right help now, somebody ask a question? Yeah, like ask for a friend? Yeah, I know okay. people here, they, they, they're gonna need this. So for people right now, they're in real estate, right? They think the market is tanking and stuff. What is a practical step that they can go out here and implement today that when they look back, by the end of the year, they were like, damn, thank God I did that. Mm -hmm. What can you share with them? Well, the first, I mean, the entire presentation. Number one, that's the that was my entire slideshow, right? But let me let me let me summarize it, right? Number one, the market's not tanking. Did you get that part? I know that. Right, like, did you guys get that? Yeah. yeah. Like, we're about to hit all time high prices right this second, and we're gonna bounce back. There's more pent up demand. I I showed you the proof there that we've ever seen in history, right? With the lowest inventory we've ever seen in history, right? As soon as mortgage rates come down, just to every little. Every little increment that it comes down, we're gonna see a surge of buyers and we're gonna see a surge of inventory, right? It's just gonna to continue to, it's gonna take a long time to, to filter out to where it balances out, but it's gonna to continue to do amazing over the next couple of years, right? So everybody understands that, correct? Even the people that didn't understand that before they walked in the room, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and what can, you do to, what, can, what can you do to implement something today? Make five new friends a day. We're property owners for the next five years, build 6,000 new friends by calling them and bypassing the entire marketing process, just talking straight to them and saying, hi, I'm an agent. I'd love to be friends with you today. Is there something I can do to help you, right? And you're gonna look back, now, now, now what, right? Let's become the most efficient. Well, I can't call all 8 million people in Houston, so I have to be very sp specific about calling the most, the highest quality leads, right? Who are the highest quality leads? They're gonna be the exact properties I wanna do business with, one. But two, based on today's market, people that don't live in the house I'm calling about. People that are already trying to sell their house. Or people that tried to sell their house and couldn't sell their house. Those are people that said, hey, I might sell. Right? Is that enough specifics? Absolutely. Just make it sure. I covered it all. You wanted me to summarize. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. She, she acted really anxious. I'll take one more. No, just you said the people that aren't active, actively living in the house, how do you do a search for that specifically? 
right on Red X on Geo Leads, you go down, you, you, you pick, you pick this, you get all the owners of the subdivision, go down to filters, and then go to listing, and then click the check the box for non owner occupied, and then click done. And it filters all those people down to the people, all the owners that don't live in the house. Also, high end luxury. If you wanted to sell just two million and up homes, you can do the same thing filter by price. And just you can go back you can, with you can go back uh, with expires ten years worth, and then filter down to just two million and up houses or one. Well, you can do a lot of different things on there. Thank you guys. Yeah.